Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I wanna to talk about the importance of having a bug out plan. The things I'm gonna talk about in this video are going to be relevant to new preppers and old preppers. So stick with me. When I first got into prepping 10 years ago, it was all about the bug out bags. It was just around the time when YouTube was getting popular and everybody was putting up videos of their bug out bags and comparing all the different nifty gear they can put inside them. Now since that time, the mentality has definitely evolved a lot. It's evolved to what I call a macro perspective on preparedness and an emphasis on sheltering in place and bugging in, which nine times out of 10 is gonna be the more rational decision you can make because surviving out in the wilderness, even if it's an urban wilderness, is gonna be wrought with so many challenges, the likelihood of it being a fatal exercise is very high. But there's gonna come a time, no matter how much stuff you have stored away, no matter how good your home fortifications and how many possible scenarios you've prepared for, there may come a time when you have to leave and where you have to detach from your stuff at home. And it's important that you have a trigger or a threshold that once it's met, you know that, okay, it's time to go. This situation can not be salvaged. There was a video of people in the Australian wildfires desperately trying to save their home, almost to the point of their own peril, because they were breathing in carbon monoxide while these flames engulfed everything around them. And that is stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid in the sense that they're not intelligent people, but it signifies that there may come a time when you have to let go of everything you've created and you have to go to plan B. Now, we don't want to go to plan B. We don't want to have to actually break out a bug out bag, but there are many scenarios that might lead to that. Like I said, wildfires. It could just be the cumulative effects of pandemic, economic collapse, civil unrest. Who knows, maybe the icing on the cake is gonna be some environmental disaster on top of all of that stuff that's going on. What if a hot war breaks out and your city is a target? It could happen. I'm not saying it will happen, but it could happen. Your home may be smoked out. Your home may be flooded out. You may be uh, chased out of your home or about to be chased out of your home by an angry mob. It could happen. We've seen it come close to happening, even though the shit hasn't even hit the fan yet. So it could very well happen that even though you do have the firepower, you may even have a sizable group. There's going to be a breaking point at which you can no longer hold people off or the risk to your family is just going to be too high to stay in that place and try to defend it. And in such case, you do need a bug out plan. Now the bug out bag has gotten a bad rap, I would say in the last few years, as we've evolved into more of a, a shelter in place community, which is understandable. I think that nine times out of 10, that's the best approach to take. But there was a reason why the bug out bag was so important. And I would argue it's still very important to this day. There may come a time when you have nowhere to go and no way to get there. And the only thing you're gonna have is the tools on your back. There may come a time when you have nowhere to go and no way to get there. Now, another important aspect of the bug out bag or what I like to call micro preparedness. I'm gonna talk about the distinction between micro and macro preparedness in a minute. But micro preparedness is important because it's something that's achievable to the average urban apartment dweller, anybody can you know, save up a few dollars every month and slowly put together a decent bug out bag. Not everybody has the money to move out to the country and buy land and put stuff on that land and build a life out there 
in a sustainable way. Not everybody has the means to do that. But everybody, for the most part, can go down to a local Walmart, put a few bucks in every month, and build themselves out a decent little escape hatch kit. So the building of a bug out bag is a learning experience in itself because it gets you familiar with all the different classes of gear that you're going to need to sustain the many aspects of life. Now, the distinction between micro and macro preparedness is such that everything that you have in your bug out bag, there's going to be a corresponding bigger thing that you're going to need to live indefinitely off the grid. So for instance, a water filter that you would put in your bag, let's say the smallest of the smalls, like something like a life straw that can filter out just bacteria, hollow fiber. The macro version of that is going to be a rain catchment system or having a water source on your land that if you need to, you can purify. What about a shelter, a tarp or a tent in your backpack? What's the macro version of that going to be? Well, obviously, ideally, a homestead of sorts or a home that is self-sustainable. doesn't necessarily have to be a homestead. You can do a lot on a half acre plot of land. You could live sustainably on a half acre plot of land if you use it right. What about the tool section of your bug out bag? The tool section of your bug out bag is going to be comprised of a multi-tool, maybe a small shovel, a knife. What's the tool section of your macro preparedness homestead going to look like? Well, it's probably going to be a lot of farming tools. What about power generation? For the bug out bag, it's going to be a small portable battery pack, maybe a small solar panel. You scale that up to an off-grid solar system. Not everybody has the money to go out and do that right away. And some people, unfortunately, may never have the money that they need to go out and do that. So for them, bugging out is all they got. Because even though it's 100% true that you should have a place to go to if you do plan on bugging out, a lot of people are never going to have that. A lot of people aren't going to have a cabin in the woods. You know, a lot of people, the, the best thing they might be capable of achieving is finding some plot on public land, which is not well traveled, where they can squat for a short period of time. That may be the best thing that people have. And indeed, if that is your plan, you should be scouting out areas where you could potentially do something like that. Because as much as it's fantasy-based thinking to think that you're going to go out there and, and survive in the wilderness, there may come a time when that really is your only option. I need to emphasize that most of the time, it's going to be far better to ride it out where you are. And the likelihood of survival even if you are surrounded by a lot of hazards and security threats, it's going to be much higher. But look, if you're living in one of these high-rise apartments and there's a grid-down predicament, a cyber attack, a electromagnetic pulse, you know, maybe you know, just the cumulative effect of all of these things, economic, a civil unrest, civil conflict even, if something like that transpires... Maybe being in a high-rise building when there's not a fully functioning fire department is not the best of ideas. Now, is running out into the wilderness with no survival skills and a bug out bag a better idea? Probably not. But what I'm saying is there may come a time where you have to make that choice as to whether to stay or to go. So the three main things to consider are what is going to be your trigger that it's time to leave? What are going to be the criteria upon which you decide, okay, it's time to bail? Where are you going to go? And how you're going to get there? And unfortunately, like I said, for some people, the scenario is going to be, I got nowhere to go and I got no way to get there. And that's why you may want to go and check out some of my other videos about how to evacuate the city, how to survive in an urban environment, in a grid down predicament, how to get out of an environment, how to defend a small community, things of that nature. Now, here's where the importance of a series of upcoming videos that I'm going to be doing is going to come into play. Those things are caching supplies in a safe place away from your main base, just in case 
that base is compromised, it's overrun, it's burned out, it's smoked out, whatever the case is, you have some kind of backup plan, some kind of backup supplies out there somewhere, not to help you survive indefinitely. Maybe if you're lucky enough, it's to get you to a bug out location that you have, but maybe it's just to sustain life for a short period of time. Whatever the case might be, having survival caches is important. The next thing is gonna be reimagining the inch bag. The inch bag, if you don't know, is an acronym for I'm never coming home. And I'm never coming home bag. It doesn't have to be a bag, it can be a kit, it can be a box of stuff you throw in your car. It's basically, okay, this is what I'm taking because my house is burning down and I'm never going to go back there again. Now, the circumstances surrounding that may be localized or they may be national. You know, you could be talking about just a local wildfire. You could just be talking about a house fire in which you're just going to go and stay at a hotel till your insurance comes through and you can move into a new place. Fine. You still need an inch plan and I'm never coming home plan in both of those scenarios. Now, if there's a nuclear war or some other major cataclysmic event, then your home's going to be leveled. So you have to go and there's, there's a good chance that you're, you're not going to have a home no matter where you go. You're hitting the road and you're going to take your chances on the road to the best of your ability. Unless you, you have a bunker or something like that and you're not in the blast zone and, and you feel you can ride it out. I mean, that's a whole other video in itself. Go check out Atlas Survival Shelters. Got to shout out my, my people. Seriously though, if you want one of the highest quality bunkers from a person who is committed to making quality stuff that's not going to rust out and break down and get flooded, check out Atlas Survival Shelters. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make in this video is that while it's maybe very unlikely that you'll ever have to abandon ship, the time may come when you have to, and you're going to need a plan for that. It's not just, oh, that's an unrealistic scenario and, you know, I, I, it's just a get home bag. No, there's times when home is not going to be there anymore. There's times when a bug out bag is going to be in the truest sense of the phrase bugging out. You're going to have to be getting out of Dodge. You're, you're, all you're going to have at your disposal is what's in that bag. Whatever's in that bag is all you're going to have for a long period of time. Now, an inch bag is something which is obviously built out a lot bigger. It's going to be a lot heavier. If you were to put a bug out bag next to a inch bag, obviously the inch bag is going to be comprised of more tools that are going to allow you to live for a longer period of time off grid in the wilderness. But nobody can last forever out there. Even the most experienced survivalists who are allowed to bring out 10 tools like they are on that show alone and they're allowed to fish and hunt and do all these things, even they lose 50 pounds after being out there for a couple months on end. So realistically, living out there in the wilderness is not gonna be a viable solution, especially if you have kids. You're gonna have to lay roots somewhere in order to build a sustainable lifestyle. Human beings are not nomadic anymore. We, we may evolve into that, you know, in some Mad Max world, several generations out, if that ever happened, we might evolve into it. But from the get-go, no, it's going to be people living in horticultural plots trying to survive. That's what it would be. Now, I think in the case of I'm never coming home, one of the main points of focus should be on your vehicle. It should be on how can I load up my vehicle with as much stuff as possible in as secure manner as possible so I can potentially live out of that vehicle if things got really bad? And of course, that's going to be contingent on the type of fuel that your vehicle takes. Now, herein lies the reason why I think that electric vehicles, in spite of the whole one-off EMP thing, okay, all that aside, electric vehicles have the potential to be an ideal inch vehicle because you can power them from the sun. And in terms of actual performance, they destroy ice vehicles, internal combustion vehicles. They destroy them on almost every metric. So ideally, that would be the case for me, some sort of EV motorhome or an EV pulling some kind of trailer that you can live out of for a short period of time. I think that the inch bag shouldn't even be considered without some vehicular component 
to it. There needs to be a means to get your ass out of Dodge with as much stuff as possible. And I don't think considering Inch as a potential strategy should even come to your mind if you don't have a vehicle. Because if you're planning on inching out into the wilderness with a backpack, chances are you're going to last a few days at best. And if you're very skilled, maybe a bit longer. And if you're, you know, really skilled and you're also a thief, like there was that one guy who, what, he lived in the wilderness and he was, he was stealing from people's houses for like 15 years or something like that. It's a true story. There was a guy who was in this community and he went missing and they found him like, I don't know, 15 years later. And he had been robbing people and just living off grid like a wild man, you know, for, for that period of time. But he was stealing. So he was kind of still leeching off the grid. But I mean, unless you're, unless you got that kind of mindset, then I don't think it's going to be feasible for you to, to eke out an existence that way. So what I'm saying is don't even think about inching out if you don't have a way to get out. And I don't think an EV bike is going to be a solution. I think an EV bike paired with some kind of motorhome might be a solution because again, you can power an EV bike from the sun and you can do a lot with an EV bike, especially around hunting and stuff like that. So it can be very useful uh, in that regard. But I don't think as a means of hauling your gear, nor is it very safe. So, you know, at least with a vehicle, you can sleep with that vehicle. And that's the going thing now anyways, is people living out of their cars. And hell, you just look at what's trending on this platform. And if you want to be a, a millionaire blogger or vlogger, uh, all you got to do is go get yourself a rusty old van and glorify the off-grid living in a vehicle lifestyle that a lot of people are doing nowadays. <laughs> like it's, you know, you see these people who are all clean shaven and beautiful young people, you know, and they're living in their vans and they're talking about how great it is, you know, even though that's the way that, you know, hobos are living and want to get away from that lifestyle. But I guess that's, that's where we're at. That's why like I say the future in its current form is probably going to be nomadic. Everybody's going to be homeless, but uh, let's not go on a political rant. <laughs> let's not do that. I'm going to stop. We're going to keep this at the level of inching out. So going back to the main points of this video is inching out is not just a fantasy. There's a reason for looking at bug out bags. There's a reason for focusing on what happens if I can never come home, but you need a plan. You need a way to get there. And even if you don't have a place to go, okay, you still need a way to get there. <laughs> so you still have to have a way of transporting yourself and as much provisions as possible to some location somewhere. Even if that means you're squatting on somebody's land, it's better than dying. Okay. I'm not saying do anything against the law or, you know, try to respect people's private property. But in the case of the collapse of civilization and you're trying to survive and you're trying to, you know, feed your family in any way you can, I guess anything goes at that point. And that's part of the problem also, again, of having a homestead is that you're going to be faced with that. You're going to be faced with people who have kids and will do anything that they can to try to keep those kids alive, even if it means kicking you out of your property. So even you are not safe and you have to have an escape hatch. You have to have a plan to get the hell off of your property if it looks like you're going to be overrun or you're going to incur casualties that you're not willing to incur or that you don't have the, the healthcare system there to treat those casualties. Because remember, all it takes is a scratch and an infection without antibiotics for you to succumb. Now, there are alternatives that I'm not going to get into in this video or also be demonetized. Every video I've made about that topic has been demonetized. But there's alternatives to that, um, to how to treat if you can't find antibiotics. Because, of course, you need a prescription to get them. There's alternatives. So let me know in the comment section, what is your inch plan? Maybe you live in a homestead. Maybe you have everything. Maybe you got the bunker. 
maybe you got the, the whole nine yards, the solar panel, you got the permaculture, you got the livestock, you got all that stuff. But what are you going to do if you have to leave? Where are you going to go? Are you just going to fight and die on that hill? Or are you going to do the smart thing in some cases and pack up shop, leave, maybe circle back around once whoever kicked you off your property got complacent, take it over from there, go rally some troops. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you, if it's not a scenario like that and you do live in the wilderness and there is a wildfire that burns you out? You know, where are you going to go to? Do you have a plan B and how are you going to get there? In the future, my next project is going to be the inch project. But we're taking the word bag out of the equation. I don't think inch bag is realistic, even though it may be the only thing you got. A duffel bag full of shit, a hundred pound duffel bag full of tools, maybe all you got, fine. But I don't think that's going to be ideal. I think inch should only be used in conjunction with the word vehicle or trailer or RV or motorhome whatever you want to attach to it, but it's got to be something that can carry a lot of stuff and take you far away from your location and potentially act as a shelter for you also. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to post some videos in the description that are related to this one that go into greater depths about things like strategic relocation, uh, escape and evasion, urban survival, things of that nature. Thanks for watching guys, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.